I got involved on Tuesday after being recalled from parental and immediately called Pete and kind of got everybody together and said, what's going on? But these guys were, were trucking already before on Monday morning. We've got something like 20 contractors and 200 people on site all pulling in the same direction. The overall organization was basically split into two components. Uh, water distribution, sprinkler, water cannons, and then heavy equipment clearing uh, fire breaks. All of these guys know what they're doing. They're team leads, they're construction leads, they're, they're yellow knifers, they're business owners. They know this terrain better than even I do. So, and want to assure people back home that everybody's trucking up here. Like there's nobody standing around and uh, we're going to be ready for this thing. Well, I think the funniest comment I've heard all week is that uh, we probably won't have any enemies after this because we've all had to put our personal differences aside and work as a team. And, uh, you know, different people have taken leadership roles and, you know, gone to the front. It doesn't make them uh, any better than anyone else. It's just so cool how everyone's been humbled and just taking the role where they're best suited. Um, you know, 75 volunteers. There's lawyers, there's there's laborers, there's everything in between. That's the hope we want to instill in everyone that's left. And thank you for leaving, because if you're here, we would have services that we have to maintain that town. So you being gone was a huge part, and just know that we are kicking ass for you guys. You know, the other day we had a no smoke, and it seemed like, oh, the, the giant is, is gone, the fire is gone. Well, this morning you wake up and you can taste it and smell it again. And as, you know, as the, the forestry... The fire professionals are telling us, don't let your guard down. It's not gone. And uh, this morning it's sunny. All the moisture is gone that we got the other day. So we haven't stopped. We haven't got off the gas pedal. We're doing as much as we can. Any of us that are working here have families that, you know, have crying phone calls at night, kids missing us. And it's it's been, we've had some laughs. We've had some tears and uh, it's tiring. We've been, you know, almost 90 hours. Some of us have worked already this week and it just, yeah, I'm super thankful for everything everybody's doing. There's a whole bunch of competitors here that just put down their swords and started ahead, yeah. working together. Started, uh, I mean, we all know each other's strengths. We all know who brings what to the table. Uh, and just started drawing on that, knowing who can uh, grab a piece of gear, move it from point A, point B, without being asked for any support. They've got their own, own path. Uh, yesterday, I think uh, 13 excavators, multiple contractors, clear 40 acres in six hours, which I find like mind-boggling if you if you really think about the magnitude of the work that was done there. This is something if you actually sat down, sat back, planned it, and coordinated it through through a project. This is months of work, and. It's all just a collaboration of all the contractors. You take this section, we'll take this section, and we're bouncing people, bouncing equipment back and forth. Uh, it, it's a level of collaboration amongst the local contractors that I've never seen, and I've been here over 30 years. The amount of pipe, the amount of pumps, the amount of fittings, this is stuff that takes months and months and, and years to plan. And I, I came in a couple days later um, off another um, job in Jasper, Alberta, and these guys were fusing pipe and putting everything together that they had. There was no time to order pipe. There was no time to order fittings. Everything you see down here, this is a, from here to the end is two kilometers and that's not even half of what you're seeing in the background here. The amount of trees that were cleared to set proper fire breaks is massive. This is the last line. Uh, there's other multiple lines in front of us. The fire, we're not expecting a fire to roll up on the city and this is our only defense. There's another line in front of this, another line in front of that. There are multiple lines out there uh, that uh, GNWT has been working on, that the wildfire professionals have been working on. Um, I suppose another thing to mention, uh, the mining companies have been pretty instrumental in this. Uh, from the onset, Giant Mine issued a stop work order uh, before the evacuation order was issued so that we could start freeing up some of the gear that we had out there. Uh, Nahani's got a pretty major contract out there. We had a multiple pieces of equipment. Uh, we were able to completely reallocate out, out here to get working on the lines. Uh, Divic reached out, uh, sent down operators for a 24-hour shift just so we could we could get the last push done. Uh, Gatchikwe has reached out. A number of the mines have reached out with support and materials. Uh, you, you can imagine scabbing together, what do we got here, 15, 25 kilometers of pipeline uh, that we literally just, everybody, what do you have in your inventory? Grab it, let's go, we'll get it on the line. Uh, we need to get conveyance of this water around the entire perimeter of the, the west flank here. All of this looked like that. Like this, this was thick, dense brush when we got here. And now we've got kilometers of, 
of wide swath of land here. Folks that came up from Alberta, the uh, disaster management professionals, uh, started thinking big picture, things that we weren't thinking about. We've had our heads down, uh, clearing a swath, getting a sprinkler, making sure that the city is uh, protected on the west side. They came in, they said, uh, uh, the, the first thing they mentioned, when's the last time the garbages around Yellowknife were emptied? Uh, there's, it's been a week and everybody just packed their stuff and there's garbage sitting around. I think we have eight bears in the city right now within city limits. Uh, wildfire pushing them in from all sides and we've got food all over the place so they're starting to think about uh, everything from the garbages that were left to how do we get 20,000 people back into the city you can't just bring everybody in the grocery stores would be empty it'd be pandemonium so uh, the, the disaster relief people they go around and they look at they're involved in every fire or flood that happens through the country and they're they're thinking real big picture uh, we're now zoomed out as of yesterday, where we're actually strategically placing assets around the city. How do we protect the north line? Uh, we've got data covered. We're, we're actually looking, we zoomed out a little bit. Uh, the past five days have just been, I mean, you can see the magnitude of work that took place in the last five days. Like Kenny said, we're zoomed out and our next phase, we're, we're trying to break it up into almost three phases. Phase one is obviously initial defense and establishing our, our, uh, our trenches here, for lack of a better term. Uh, our next phase is phase two, and that'll be when the fire's actually with us or on us, and then what that looks like in Yellowknife, because then our priorities change. And we'll be looking at reinforcing, our next objective is reinforcing our northern flank, uh, based on expert advice from uh, ECC and their firefighting experts. And then obviously, as Kenny just said, phase three is gonna be like, when people start coming back, what's that look like? 20,000 people funneling back into Yellowknife, expectations are probably that the city's going to be fully functional and grocery stores are going to be stocked and things like that. So we have to make sure that all that is rolling. And the logistics side of that is just huge. I can't put much emphasis on it. Uh, even getting fuel to pumps and water to pumps and food to, uh, food to the kitchens and things like that. The logistics on this side of things is huge. And it's just amazing that we've been able to do it, not ad hoc, but at last minute through WhatsApp or whatever, right? It's just it's just been a huge effort, huge coordinated effort by a bunch of people that just just want to protect our community. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to to my wife and my in-laws and and all my family for reaching out and and worrying. And uh, feels good to know that you're loved. Um, thank you to all the volunteers. We've talked about the magnitude of the project, but. How do we keep mental health in check? How do we keep our crews happy? How do we keep them fed? So uh, that's also something that the uh, the professionals have talked talked to us about in the last couple of days is you guys need to have a mental break for yourselves. So today a few crews are getting some time off. We're doing a little better job on, on making sure that we have the longevity and the sustainability to fight this thing as long as it need. The heroes behind the scene are the ones that need to be thanked. Uh, I mean, you can see contractors actually pushing, but there was a group of people that actually got together, fed them. Uh, a, a local guy who has been involved in fueling for a long time actually took, uh, took custody or control of uh, a local fuel dispensary and just started working with the contractors, getting fuel out there. It's the little things that you don't see that happen in the background that without it, everything falls apart. So uh, the, the heroes behind the scene are the ones that... I would think. Uh, I would also like to say happy birthday to my son. Happy birthday, Nikki. I'd like to thank my colleagues at City Hall for putting up with me and, and kind of just supporting us from behind the scenes, like Kenny said. Um, I'd like to thank these guys right here. Like, my name might be at the top of some silly org chart on paper, but that's not how it works. So um, I thought Kenny hated my guts, so <laughs> now we're, we're, uh, we're in pretty good shape, I hope, and uh, I'll help him wrestle through some red tape at the end of all this. But uh, who else? Uh, my thoughts and thanks, eventual thanks, are going to go to the firefighters because the next phase two is going to be heavy on them, and we're just uh, we're here to support those guys and, and be ready for them and help them when they need us. <laughs> There's been overwhelming support on social media. I don't even know what to say about that. I've had someone contact me from Perth, Australia. Like, I don't know what to do with any of this shit. I'm just trying not to get in trouble. Um, really appreciate all the, all the thanks and praise and words I'm trying to pass out to the crew as much as I can. I can't respond to everybody, but it, like we appreciate it so much and everybody's just thankful that we've got the support down south. And I really miss my, uh, my kids and my wife. It was hard to put them in a truck uh, without me going with them. It was a weird feeling. So 
it's hard to see videos and stuff. Uh, I got a video of him watching me on the news last night, which is not my comfort zone, but it really, uh, really starts to pull at you a little bit. So yeah, just thanks to everybody. I miss you a lot. Cheers. I do think it's important to say we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, you look behind me looking south and it looks like a really beautiful day. Uh, you look north and you can see five planes in the air, water bombers, uh, and, and smoke on the western side. Uh, we're, we're, we're not out of this yet. Uh, it's going to be a, a while before we, we're, fe <clears throat> we're feeling comfortable enough that everyone would, we would bring our families back. Yeah, and if you're sitting around and you're feeling guilty that you could be helping more or you could be with us and you want to get back, like we really appreciate that. Everybody that reaches out, we're taking your name. We may not need you right now because we can't have people here that have to be, uh, have to be looked after or, or if they're standing around. So we know everybody wants to help. We know you're feeling bad. We know people say they feel helpless. We really appreciate it. And uh, we're doing the logistics on this side to see who we need when we need them. And, and we'll do that and we'll reach out. So please continue to send your information. We're logging it all. And if we, if we definitely need reinforcements, we'll be in touch. Thanks everyone, really appreciate it.